Hello, this is How Dirty Is the Man Behind the Gloves, which they are kind of... much better. Have you ever been curious about the unseen world that lives among us? How small, you say? Well, they're small. Smaller than that. Smaller than that. Okay, very funny, but it is smaller than that. No, whoa, 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 whoa! Too small. Just back it up a little bit, alright? Okay, that's perfect. Wonderful. This is a bacteria. This is a bacteria, baby. Let's go! <coughs> uh, well, uh, anyways, uh... Slight correction. That's a bacterium. When there's one, it's a bacterium. Any number bigger than one, it's bacteria. Got all that? Okay, very good. And here's hoping this is common knowledge, but bacteria do live everywhere. I'm talking about they're living here, they're living here, here, over here, way out there, and yes, even here. While more often than not, they tend to be harmless to most healthy people, sometimes, sometimes, more sinister ones can lead to disease, and even death. Death. So join me and Kirby as I give you the bare bone basics on the world of bacteria. Hopefully dispelling any misconceptions you might have and who knows maybe you'll even learn a thing or two. Let's roll. Ah, bacteria. Great scourge and Equally a great friend of mankind. They're mostly free-living unicellular organisms, unlike you and I, which are multicellular. I hope. They're essential in breaking down and recycling nutrients, and that's what leads to that god-awful smell. Oh, heavens me. There's symbiotic and parasitic relationships with plants. And animals, too. Don't forget us. Yes, you're an animal, too. Rawr. People, like you and me, or the skinwalker outside. People are covered by and filled with bacteria. 10 to the 14th cells at any given time, roughly. Most of these tend to be in the skin, and even more than that are in the gut. And most of this bacteria tends to be pretty benign, harmless, the ones in your gut usually pretty beneficial. The ones in your skin can also be beneficial as well. And uh, who would have thought our immune system is pretty good at its job? Most bacteria you don't, that gets in your system, you don't, you won't even notice. It just <laughs> See ya. But of course there are more sinister bacteria out there. The likes of cholera, leprosy, tuberculosis, black death, syphilis, and a whole mess of other fun party favors that you can share with your friends. All right, all right, enough stalling. Let's get around to actually meeting the little fellows. Bacteria tend to be categorized by two main ways here. We have the shape and the cell wall type. So we're talking about shape. First we have cocci. Don't laugh, it's not funny. Those are spherical shaped. Then we have bacilli, which are rod shaped, spirilla, and that kind of lumps in a bunch of other less common shapes that are spirals or just a big mess. So I wouldn't worry too much about those. They can exist as a single cell, in pairs, chains, or clusters. Well, how about the structure of these bad boys? They're cells. We're made of cells. I'm in a cell. Please send help. Well, for bacteria, they're a little simpler than plant and animal cells. Let's take a look. So here's a look at the handsome devil. Look how nice and dressed up he got for you. As you can see, there is no nucleus like there is in animal and plant cells. The DNA floats around in a bit more of a loose, little, uh, little more casual section called the nucleoid. That's a very, very protozoa of it. Uh, also here you can see we have ribosomes that float around and those 
make proteins that the bacteria needs to survive. And all this is floating around in something called cytoplasm, which is like a jelly-like fluid that supports the ribosomes and genetic material. It's pretty much the party punch at your freshman dorm. Good times. Holding all this together is the cytoplasmic membrane, which is a phospholipid bilayer that regulates nutrients and waste in and out of the cell. Everyone's got one of these. Now these spiky purple things over here, that's not his do, as the kids say. No, no. That's pili, which are little hair-like strands that help the bacteria attach to stuff. Sticky fingers! Finally, we have the flagellum, which is the long whip-like nonsense sticking out of it. This helps the bacteria move, and they can have more than one if they're feeling a little frisky. On to classification. As we discussed previous, they are the shapes. Cocci, bacilli, spirilli, and others that aren't as important. But the other way we test them is by the cell wall thickness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and scientists, like myself, do this through the process called gram staining. Gram staining is a technique developed in 1882 by Danish bacteriologist Hans Christian Gram. Thank you, Hans Christian Gram. Well done. Very good. The process involves using a series of dyes and then washes. Scientists will stain the cell wall of the bacteria with these dyes before washing any excesses away. Thicker cell walls, thick cell walls, hold on to the dye. It gives them a very deep purple or blue appearance under the microscope. Something like this. Whereas the thin cell walls don't hold the dye as well. And so throughout the washes, it kind of fades into a bit more of a light pink, light red under the microscope. And it looks something like this. And well, science has progressed a lot since good old Hans Christian Graham came along and gave us a big old kick in the right direction. Uh, we have a much more advanced ways of testing now. That being said, gram staining is still an essential part of finding out which bacteria is which. It's usually a good start to beginning more rigorous identification method. And it's very important that every undergrad at least stains one article of clothing with methyl blue. It's like a rite of passage. If you're interested in a more detailed description of IDs and ID methods that are more with the times, just drop a comment down. Below. So, we know a lot about the little fellas now. They're practically close acquaintances. But what are they doing, anyways? What's their purpose? What's your purpose? Do you ever get nervous? The long and the short of it is that bacteria spend most of their time breaking stuff down. That's generally the purpose of most bacteria. That's right, they b -b -b break it down. Along with fungi, they break down a lot of organic matter to recycle the nutrients back into the ecosystem which is pretty cool. Thanks, fellas. The, through this breaking down process, they cycle carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur back into simpler elements that are more easily incorporated into plant and animal life. Big win for the plants and animals. Another purpose bacteria have is symbiosis, which is where they pair with another organism in a relationship that benefits both parties, like a marriage. This involves bacteria and roots of most plants, and as well as your gut microbe. That's right. Very important to helping you break down and process everything that you eat. The bacteria live, win, they get a place to live, food to eat, and you win because they break down the complicated molecular structures and it makes it easier for you to eat. Yay, thank you bacteria. Very well done. And some bacteria are very exceptional, and they can do a process called nitrogen fixation, which is where they pull nitrogen out of the atmosphere and work it into forms that are better for plants to use. Nitrates, nitrites, and ammonia. And this fertilizes the soil, making it healthy for the crops and the plants, and in turn, for us. Thank you again, bacteria. Another very important process, to me especially, is fermentation. 
one of humanity's oldest tricks. Bacteria eat the sugars present in grain, vegetables, fruits, what have you, and it produces alcohols, acids, gases. Thanks to bacteria, our platters are graced with the likes of cheese, yogurt, sauerkraut, kimchi, and bread. Thank you, bacteria. Editing How Dirty Is Here, and I actually am shocked. I cannot believe I didn't say beer. Please go back in time and punch me in the head as hard as you can. Thank you. And finally, one of their many purposes is antibiotics. Yes, we turn bacteria against itself to fight off infections in humans and livestock. And well, we have a whole thing about antibiotic-resistant bacteria coming up. It's done a pretty good job up until recently, so... We had a good run. That's about our quick rundown on bacteria, our small companion on this fleeting journey through time and space on a very small rock and a very small system and in a very big universe. All in all, we could have gotten much worse, but for all the sickness they can cause, they provide just as much reasons to keep them around. I mean, I don't know about you, I'm not living without beer and cheese. My German ancestors would kill me. And speaking of companions that could be worse, tune in uh, eventually when we'll talk about the much eviler and stranger companion to bacteria, the virus. Yes, the virus. Busy few weeks ahead for me, but I'm gonna try to knuckle down and get it out sooner than later. But uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, TTFN, ta-ta for now. Thank you.